Testing, one, two, three. OK, perfect. All right. Uh, OK, hey, guys. Uh, I'm Josh, and I'm going to talk to you today about online unconstraints and modular maximization. So this is joint work with my advisor, Tim Ruffgarden. And let's get right to it. All right, so first, let's just you know, have a quick one-slide review of what submodularity is. So the situation I want you to have in mind is that there's a ground set of n elements that we care about, and there's a function that maps subsets of these elements onto non-negative values. And we're going to say that this function is submodular if it displays a very particular diminishing returns uh, property. So what is this property? Well, the technical definition is that you know, if we look at two sets in this space, T, which is a subset of S, and we look at an element that's not in either of these two sets, then we can think about what happens as we add I to each of these sets. So what this just says is if we take the larger set, you know, S, we add I to it, that's not as good as if we take the smaller set and then we add I to that. So diminishing returns, it's not as good when we're adding to the larger set. All right, so this is a fairly basic definition, and in fact, it turns out to capture a lot of interesting functions from areas such as theoretical computer science, combinatorial optimization, economics, and machine learning. So uh, let's take a closer look at one such function this captures. So, uh, right, so this is the cut function. So, you know, let's imagine this case where we have a graph that we're interested in with vertices and edges, and we're interested in particular in vertex cuts of this graph. So, you know, just based on the definition of the previous slide, the ground set of elements is going to be, you know, our set of vertices, and our, f our function, f, is going to map subsets of these vertices into their cut values. So, in particular, uh, if you look at the top left of this diagram, you'll notice that, you know, f of v2 and v4 is just four edges, which is the number of edges crossing this cut. And so, if you think about it for not too, not too long, you can, you know, prove that this function is non-monotone submodular. Uh, you know, but this, of course, this is just one of many functions. Other interesting functions include certain constraint satisfaction problems, maximum facility location, and substitute goods. Uh, all right, so now that we're armed with an example, let's take a look at a line of research concerned with these submodular functions. Uh, so my goal today will be to tell you more about the online setting, but in order to do that, I have to first give you a little bit of background on the offline setting. So here's the offline USM problem. So, you know, offline, we're given, you know, naturally one of these functions, f, and all we want to do is we want to maximize that function. So we want to find the set s to plug in that maximizes the function value. Uh, so if you think a little bit about the example I just showed you on this previous slide, this cut function, uh, you might realize that USM is actually a generalization of the max cut problem. And because maximum cut is NP-hard, naturally the USM, function, uh, the USM problem is NP-hard as well. So uh, we're going to have to settle for a little bit less than trying to solve it exactly. We'll just ask the question, how well can we approximately you know, compute one of these maxima in polynomial time? And uh, this, first, this question was first asked by uh, Feige et al. in 2011, and uh, let's see what results they got. So uh, here's, a, here's a number line of all the possible approximation ratios we could hope for. We know that one's not possible because we can't hope to solve the problem exactly. So the first result that Feige et al. showed in, in 2011 is that if you just pick a uniform random subset of you know, these n elements, then you're going to get a one-quarter approximation to the best possible subset of those n elements. And they also show that you could do a little bit more work. You can conduct a noisy local search, and that would bump up your approximation ratio to 0.4. And then finally, the last key result is they show that if you're given f as a black box value oracle, then you need to evaluate an exponential number of times to have a hope of doing better than 1 half. So, you know, uh, so in 2011, the right answer was somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5. And uh, this, this question was settled after a line of work uh, by this paper by Buchbinder et al. in 2015, which showed that there's something we call a double greedy algorithm uh, that gets a 0.5 approximation. So this, this offline maximization problem has been very well studied, uh, but what happens when we take a look at the corresponding online problem? So I have to be specific exactly what I mean by an online problem. So I mean online in the sense of online no regret learning. So I'm sure that many of you are familiar with it, but just as a quick recap, uh, so in online no regret learning, you have a bunch of actions you're interested in taking, and you have some time horizon capital T. And you play you know, this game in a bunch of rounds from round one to round capital T. And each round, our algorithm gets to choose an action from the action space, 
and our adversary chooses a reward vector which maps possible actions to rewards in 0, 1. And uh, the regret in the name of uh, online no regret learning is the, the following thing. It's the gap between how well our, arg our algorithm has been doing over the various rounds compared with the benchmark of uh, you know, what was the, if we knew the adversary sequence up front, what was the best fixed single action we could have taken the entire time? So that's just this blue term, and then the orange term is what we scored. And we say that an online algorithm is no regret, which means it's pretty good, if its regret term is sublinear in T. So as time goes on, it's doing better and better. All right, so what does our USM problem look like in this no regret model? So, of course, there's the online USM problem, which is what this talk is about. And uh, so in each round, the actions that our algorithm is going to be choosing from is going to be a subset of the ground set. So, you know, you can choose elements two, four, and five, say. And the reward vectors, so the adversary can't pick arbitrary reward vectors. The reward vector has to correspond to a submodular function. So, you know, just flashing back to our cut example earlier in this talk, uh, if the adversary can only pick cut functions, then this is like the algorithm is given a graph on end nodes, it chooses a cut of the graph every day, and then the adversary chooses weights for all the edges in the graph. And the question is, can, algorithm, can the algorithm do well compared to the best fixed cut in the graph it could have chosen? Uh, right, so you know, naturally for no regret, the question is, you know, in general, is there a no regret algorithm for online USM? And unfortunately, because the online setting is at least as hard as the offline setting, the answer is no, which just follows from the previous lower bound from Feige et al. Okay, so we're gonna have to think about approximation again. And luckily, there is a notion of that combines online algorithms with uh, approximation algorithms, and it's called alpha regret. It was introduced by Kakata et al. in 2009. Uh, and you can see the definition of alpha regret is almost identical to our definition of regret from before. The only difference is that, you know, this first term, uh, over here has an alpha tacked on in front. So for example, if we're talking about one half regret, instead of aiming to you know, compare with the best fixed action, we're aiming to compare to one half of the value that that best fixed action is getting. And uh, so, yeah, so again, just like no regret, we can define no alpha regret. That just means the alpha regret is sublinear in T. Uh, right, so you know, the new question we have when we're studying alpha regret is, what's the biggest alpha where we can get a no alpha regret algorithm. Just like for approximation algorithms, it's what's the biggest alpha where there's an efficient alpha approximation algorithm. Uh, right, and the really interesting question for you know, not just the USM problem, but many problems like this one, is whether or not the alphas are the same for both the offline and the online cases. And I'll remind you that the, the offline answer looked like this. We could get one half and we knew we couldn't do any better than one half. Uh, all right, so what, is, what does the right chart look like for online USM? I guess, the, I guess you guys know the answer because it was spoiled in the title of the talk, but uh, right. So directly, what you can observe just from the Feige et al. result is because we know, you know uniform random subset gets one fourth, it's quite easy to get uh, no one fourth or get algorithm online. And you know, because again, uh, online is only harder than offline, we know that we can't hope to do better than no one half regret. And uh, our result is you know, the fact that for the case of USM, there's no gap. You can actually get a no one half regret algorithm. So you know, this time, the answer indeed was we get the same alpha for both online and offline. Um, but there's definitely an interesting future research direction, which is you know, how broadly can we match offline performance in an online setting? Uh, right, and I'll mention uh, for our algorithm, so the starting point of our algorithm, of course, is this uh, optimal offline algorithm, Buchbinder et al. Uh, we have to do some more work in order to get things to translate over to the online regime. Uh, okay, so I'm running out of time, uh, but you know, if you want more details about exactly you know, how we get our algorithm to work, or you're just interested in this very general research question of you know, when do offline algorithms convert to online algorithms when they're both approximation, you should uh, come find me at the poster session tonight. Thanks. Okay, we can have one.